A fire that broke out at 6.30 a.m. on the fateful morning of August 8th of last year reignited, causing the wildfire that destroyed Lahaina and killed more than 100 people. That's the findings of the Cause and Origin report released yesterday. Hawaii's congressional representative for Maui County and District 2, Congressional District Representative Jill Tokuda, joins us now. Aloha and good morning, Representative. Thank you so much for stopping by with us. Thanks for having me. What are your thoughts on the report that was released yesterday? Well, you know, I think all of us are pouring through the hundreds of pages that are you know, included in the origins and, and cause and origins report, the ATF report that uh, many people have been waiting for for some time now, an attachment to that report. And I do think that uh, while there are no surprises, I do think it lays out what we need to do going forward and not just for Maui County, but for all of our islands to really reduce that fuel load how we need to have more eyes on the ground when it comes to potential areas where we could see fire ignite and what we have to do going forward. So um, it is a long anticipated report, but quite frankly, the actions ahead, that to me is, is the most important thing we've got to focus on. Yeah, so let's get into moving forward. So what was found is re-energized utility lines that were broken in the morning started that original fire, which had reignited. Now, as Hawaiian Electric looks to harden and strengthen its grid, how do you think it can do so moving forward with maybe federal help to make sure that it's not just ratepayers that cover the burden of this cost? Absolutely. At the end of the day, you know, we have to make sure we are looking at every available pot of resources from infrastructure monies that we have available at the federal level to be able to, to harden those utilities, even to put up more safety system cameras. As you know, almost 80 cameras will go up statewide um, as part of HECO's plan. They did pull down federal money to be able to pay for half of that. That's going to, again, keep eyes um, on all potential areas where we could see potential flare-ups or any emergency issues alert us immediately using AI technology and be able to get people quickly to the scene, um, ideally to be able to prevent fires from really starting in the first place. And so there's resources for that. I think we're also going to have to be looking at the human infrastructure and our firefighting emergency response infrastructure and to the fullest extent that the federal government can assist in us beefing that up, I think we could always use more. Right, whether it is firefighters, whether it's stations, equipment, whatnot, throughout the state, um, we really need to make sure that if and when we have a fire or any kind of emergency situation, we'll be prepared to respond immediately and keep boots on the ground there to make sure, like in this case, that no fire is reunited. And we know that that is something that um, you, you can never be fully aware of the situation. Um, and in this particular instance, it, it was tragic when that reignition took place. Representative yourself and the rest of Hawaii's congressional delegation have been lobbying for further disaster relief, of course, for mm -hmm. Maui, but also for other stricken areas across the country, like we're seeing right now with uh, Hurricane Helene in, in Appalachia, et cetera. Uh, what do you feel like when Congress does reconvene in November needs to happen to make this possible? It has to be the first thing we absolutely do. As soon as we get back in November, that needs to be number one on the agenda. Literally days before Hurricane Helene uh, hit the continent, you know, I was circulating. I introduced a bipartisan letter, you know, calling on our leadership of the House and the Senate to do something about this. We need disaster relief funding, CDBG, DR funding. We need to pass the disaster relief tax act that the house had put forward multiple times already um, our people can't wait disaster doesn't discriminate in terms of which state and which political party you happen to be affiliated where you live it is something we need to do to address all of the needs our communities have right now and so it has to very much be the very first thing that we do billions of dollars are required right now to get immediate help to those that are suffering from hurricane helene and for Maui, right, in particular, we need that CDBG DR money as well so we can really start to do the look forward, the recovery. And as we know, FEMA still needs resources to be able to help us here at home. So that is first on order, first on deck. Um, and that's what I'm going to be continuing to fight for. And you've proposed legislation with tax relief for these communities. What do you feel like this can do? You know, at the end of the day, the bipartisan tax relief package that I was a part of and we pushed forward over to the Senate, it's going to make sure more dollars stay in our Ohana's pockets. For example, we've got a, a very large settlement that people will start to be accessing, making sure that it is not taxable income. You know, again, how do we make sure that every possible resource that can go towards healing and recovery actually stays with survivors, stays right here at home? And that's really what that that tax package was all about. And it's really, really necessary right now, especially when we consider that every day more disasters are happening across the country, but especially back here at home. 
um, it's time and people have been and we need to make sure they have the resources um, to heal and to rebuild. Yes, it's so important to make sure that those folks in Maui as well as across the country now with Hurricane Helene have those resources. Congressional Representative Jill Tokuda, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you.